Okay. You guys yeah, ready? Sounds on. Right. Ready. All right. I'm going to call this meeting to order. This is the uh, April 26, 2017 Board of Zoning Appeal Meeting. Uh, Judy, would you call the roll, please? Yes. Janelle. Here. Perry. Here. Pfeiffer. Here. Reyes. Here. Also present is Denise Swinger, Village Planner. Um, have this, everybody looked at the minutes? Yes. Yeah, I did. Um, does anybody have any changes, edits? No, I, I don't. Does anybody have a motion to approve them? I'll make a motion to approve them. A second? I'll second the motion. All right. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Um, next on the agenda is yeah. oh <laughs> all right we have a we have to nominate a chair oh you you did uh, you already nominated. Nominated. nominated yeah, yeah I nominated you. yeah nominated. No, I second that that's that's happened that happened last <laughs> month this is just the vote on it yeah got a vote on the table all right so oh, last right. meeting I was also nominated oh. Um, it's getting to be a habit. Hmm? It's getting to be a habit. I know. It's, don't think about it anymore, you know? <laughs> so what do we do? Just get a roll call vote? Yep, let's do it. <laughs> All right. All right, so the nomination is on the on the table for uh, Ted Donnell as chair for 2017. Rias? Uh, yes. Perry? Yes. Uh, Pfeiffer? Yes. Donnell? I guess. <laughs> I guess thing. All right, you're in. Great. Um, you're good at it, by the way. I just want you to know you are. Yeah, so. you've had some experience. We, we don't like long meetings, do we? <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is a public hearing for 130 North Walnut Street. Uh, Denise, would you like to please give us a run sure. through of this? Yes. Um, this is a, a garage that uh, has a collapsing roof and they want to not only fix the roof but to increase the height so that they can have storage uh, up above and also be able to stand up in it um, to where they to organize their storage the the homeowners um, have enlisted um, Spencer group construction and um, I had talked with uh, Mike Spencer who's here tonight previously about an accessory dwelling unit um, there are certain requirements in the conditional use for an accessory dwelling unit which includes a kitchenette a bathroom um, a bedroom and a living area and um, the uh, applicants uh, were not interested in doing that. They, just, so they decided to go for a BZA hearing for a variance of four feet to increase the height so that they could have the storage and be able to stand up in the room to organize it, I guess. Okay. Okay. That's it. Anybody have any questions for Denise before I open it up to the floor? Um, I do. You know, I was looking for the packet and I was confused by the or, or the things I see in the packet and the set of drawings to me uh, raise questions about how this could be a, a not be a non-conforming structure because it appears by several criteria to be one by the drawings that I see in the packet uh, most notably the setback at the back I was told that the setback is 10 feet from the rear and 5 feet it's, from it, the There's side. not a dimension drawing, but it looks to be somewhere in the range of 2 to 5 feet just by eyeballing it. That is not what I was told by the construction company. When there's a drawing in the packet, that if we're, we're not supposed to read drawings graphically, but it's neither dimensioned nor graphically representing a 10 foot well setback. if you go you, i don't you can't really go by this gis because those are never absolute so no. you, yeah well i'm not going by the photo i'm going by the oh. drawing in the packet which is supposed to describe the setback 
And the other question would be the, what is actually the designation for the setback as it's in the code? For RB, I thought that was 20 feet for the back. No, for accessory structures, it's five feet from the side and 10 feet from the rear. But for RB, which- It doesn't matter, all, it's for all areas, A, B, and C. Um, then why do they have the setbacks different for- That's for the primary dwelling. Accessory structures are different. Well, in any case, I don't think I see a, an indication that documents a 10-foot setback. Um, I can, if I can say something real quick. Well, here. let me go through, we'll go through questions here, and then I'll open it up and we can kind of debate about that. And that's a fairly direct, Ted, if you were preparing drawings, you uh, well, are, are I, in the architecture profession as well, that, that if that's a material element of your proposal or plan, you designate it clearly. If this was, if the way I interpreted this was simple. It's an existing unit that's already there. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a change of use whatsoever. Whether it's conforming or non-conforming really didn't matter to me. Mm -hmm. um, so I considered it to be a replacement of the building, however it wanted to be taller. That's really where I was at. So whether it was five foot and 10 foot, and I did read something that the builder said that it was within the setbacks. You know, I could take them for word or ask, I guess we could ask to get it surveyed, but you know, again, it's on the footprint of what's already there. So they're not gonna move it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, the, the question of whether it's conforming or non-conforming, I take it that that's material to the business that we have with the, uh, the, the request. Since they're asking for a variance, I would say you're probably right. And it does have impact on how we would uh, view the particular requirements. Um, we'll ask them in a minute okay. about that. Uh, Chris, did you have any questions? I don't know. I don't either. Um, my sense of this, you know, just to throw this out here, I think that we in in I don't know how many BZAs we've had recently. Uh, most of them have been uh, clarifying zoning code issues that I think are somewhat problematic for interpretation and things like that. And I frankly think this is another one. Um, I don't know why we have a distinction between accessory unit and accessory dwelling unit when it comes to something like height. And so you know, it, in my mind. It's one of those things that I wanted to have discussion. We won't during this particular hearing, but maybe afterwards, um, but have a little bit of a debate here about that, you know, and get everybody's input and see if that's not something that we might make a recommendation to planning commission to increase all accessory structures to 24 foot maximum height and call it a day. Yeah. yeah. I know if that's the intention of the village um, planners, leadership, council, then it would be simpler to legislate that rather than, um, than, than have the, you know, the sort of restrictions built into the code the way they're written now. Uh, and, and the reason, I mean, I, I guess I you know, uh, end up having questions like that opening question that I read the code and, and take it that our, our sort of job is to be kind of go-betweens between the code as it's written and what's proposed. And it's not to say it's a good or bad proposal, it's just to, to read the two against each other. So you know, not to do a judgment, but, but the question of what the village wants, I think you know, we, should, we should legislate a code that gives us the tools to get what we'd like. Oh, I agree. Yeah. Code. And I think that, you know, frankly, we've done a good yeah. job of that. I, you know, there's been a lot of things that were gray that I think are finally getting to kind of flush out. You know, this just happened to be another one. But, Anyway, um, we'll talk about that later. Um, all right, at this point, I'll open it up to the floor. Um, if you have comments or questions, or if we can ask you questions, please come up to the podium and state your name for the record. Michael Spencer, um, Yellow Springs resident. Um, I believe that uh, the setback on the rear of the property is uh, 10 feet, and it might be a little more. The north easement for the accessory structure right now is about 14 to 15 feet, and the south easement is five feet. I'm almost positive about those uh, measurements. I may be within a foot or so, but I do know that 
I discussed in length with in length with the homeowners about the rear easement being 10 feet, 14 on the side, and five from the neighbor to the south. Um, it is an existing structure, so uh, the use of their structure isn't going to change. We had discussed in length about doing an accessory dwelling so that later if they decided to do something different with that um, that you know they could do that without having other uh, uh, zoning hearings and meetings regarding that that didn't interest them they solely want to use this for storage um, they are still keeping a single car garage on one side of that unit um, <clears throat> and i know that we did the six foot upstairs because they have specific racks and many of them that are in storage that they have purchased that are six feet tall. So their idea was that they could throw all of these onto the outside walls of the upstairs unit and not lose floor space, but have headroom to bring up big stuff and store it up there if they wanted to. Um, that's why we gave them a staircase instead of doing like a pull down ladder. Um, they are older. I, I, I did not want to make things difficult on them as far as that's concerned. So um, I suggested maybe, uh, you know, going this route. Um, but we did talk about accessory dwellings in, in length, and it was just something that they weren't interested in for themselves. Um, and they said that their idea was when they decide to move on uh, and relocate, that that would be something maybe the, the people after them uh, could do. But that was discussed. When you measured the, the building, did you measure it to a fence line or some established? Yeah, I, I measured to what, th there's fences surrounding all of the property and there's a telephone pole on the back of the property that is, exceeds 10 feet because I believe it's sitting in the easement. So to that telephone pole is like 12 feet plus or minus a little bit. Yeah, there's there's a village alley in the back. <laughs> yes, so well, it's different. not really accessible anymore, but yeah, yes, but it is an alley. That's its designation. Yes, correct. So I was going to ask Denise, um, this app from this aerial, it looks like the alley is terminated here and here. Yeah. So therefore, it cannot be an alley? It's, it's probably a vacated alley, and in some, in some um, other places in town, I've noticed that they're vacated, but they're not marked as such on GIS. Well, of course, I didn't. I also didn't put those parameters in. But there are other situations like that as well around town, and they're just not uh, vacated. They are vacated, but the GIS has, just has not adjusted. been adjusted, and I don't know why. Because as a homeowner. Um, you have a right if there's an, a vacated alley behind your property. You, you and your neighbor can get together and split that in half and each gain whatever well, that seven is. seven and a half feet usually, yeah. yeah. Right. You know. And, and, I, and I think if I could say, I, I think back there it's already been, it's just one or two fences right next to each other connecting the backyard. So maybe that's something that's happened in the past already. So then it, if that's the case, you don't know if the fence line is in the middle of vacated alley correct. or if it's the actual property. Correct. Yeah, there's a bit of rush, so maybe you know, a bit of call about getting in there really. And, and the structure was built quite some time ago. It's a block uh, construction structure at this moment. Um, so I really didn't honestly get involved in too many easements because it's an existing structure and it's been there for, I would say, at least since the 50s, if not longer. Anybody have any questions for the builder here? No. I don't want to know. Um, I, one that you were just saying, um, I was squinting and looked at the uh, electronic. It looked like the, the ceiling lines, heights that you have on this drawing. I'm not sure. If, are you the author of the drawing as well? No. Because no. the ceiling heights on the drawing indicate spaces that would conform with a living space inside. It's an eight foot something in the middle and um, something like seven and a half feet at the edges. That's on the drawing in front of us. And uh, you're talking about the upstairs or the downstairs? Upstairs. Upstairs is six foot on the outside. It's outer. dimensioned as eight foot six in the middle and eight foot at the edge if you blow this drawing up. Somebody uh, have it electronically? I looked at it. In the I believe the 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 peak. <clears throat> uh, yes, you're right. Uh, right now, their garage is about seven foot ten, 
seven foot seven, somewhere around there. It's shorter than eight foot. So we were going to raise the course of block so that they had head height. I'm six two, and it's within you know less than a foot, a foot or less, maybe a little over a foot. So I think it was. Uh, you remember the measurement? It's been a while since I've been there measuring, but the downstairs is under eight feet. So their their thought was they want eight foot. They want to be able to. He couldn't get his truck in. I know that. And his trucks you know, six, eight maybe, and he couldn't get through the garage door to get his truck in the garage door, so I didn't even a foot. So <clears throat> the reason we wanted to raise it a block was that they could have new garage doors put in, he could actually pull his truck in the garage, uh, and uh, one section of that was left. And like I said, they wanted a higher upstairs because in their storage unit, they had these pre-bought uh, shelving units that are six foot tall. So we wanted to make knee walls six feet. And then the reason the pitch is what it is, is we were matching the existing pitch on the house, which I believe was a six or seven twelve. Um, and uh, uh, doing the math, the, the, the peak came out to be about eight foot six, which was uh, 21 feet 10, I think was the overall height of the structure. Is that correct? The overall height from I'm ground not recalling right off, but I did look at the, okay. like the way that it's dimensioned. Uh, okay. Uh, and it caught my eye with the interior being conforming with occupancy for inside. Okay. I understand. That's how it's drawn. That's not the use, but uh, their use was specifically to get six foot knee walls on the second story for shelving. Okay. Are you building to the drawing or are you building to the description that you're telling I am building us? to the drawing. Well, it's the, the, drawing. The, the bearing point for the truss on the second it, floor bearing at eight feet. Right, that's the edge. So it's yeah. it's a fraction under eight foot if it's finished. But, uh, so it's something like seven foot six at the uh, edges? I'm going to have to look at your plans because that's not the drawing I received. The drawing I have, uh, the knee walls on the second story are six foot tall. Hmm. And then the, writ, the roof, uh, what's the total width of the building? 20, it was 32 by 24. I believe so I haven't looked at the plans in a couple of weeks to be honest so um, um, but I can tell you that the plans that I have show a six foot knee wall in the second story not an eight foot in the wall the eight foot walls on the first These are the floor. only plans that I have so I don't yeah, know you have, they, they're in the truck. yeah grab them yeah did you were the, were these plans possibly originally when we were talking about accessory dwelling yeah, could they be an earlier version be I earlier believe earlier you version? may have them yeah because we do not have we we've gone through eight different drawings I, I can tell you that but the drawings that I have final show a six foot uh, ex, uh, exterior knee wall on the second story and not an eight foot that eight foot was when we were doing accessory dwellings so maybe the pdf was emailed the wrong pdf because i'm sure that was printed off of the pdf because i never turned it in so what is, so what is used for the and i believe our overall height from grade was 2110 which was three feet ten inches above the, the variance for accessory dwellings Yeah, that's got to be different than yeah. what we've got here. This is this is the drawing that was approved by the builder, um, and it shows a six-foot knee wall on the exterior, the peak. He did have that to uh, eight foot five and a quarter to the center, okay. and the garage floor on the bottom. <clears throat> I believe. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the finished height on the first floor would then be eight foot nine. I'm going to raise one house oh. block. It's at seven foot three right now. Maybe that was the change that's making this difference. If you're gaining, trying to gain height on the on the garage bay and change that around between these, but yeah. the version we've got and, and it's the I think those part of the are the accessory dwelling yeah. uh, drawings. Those are not the, the drawings yeah. that we're running off of. I don't know if you guys want yeah. that as well. What were the overall? We ended up doing six the same overall. 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 So it's twenty one ten. Yeah, so they're putting the, the, the height below instead of up, above, okay. but uh, 
I mean, it, it, it leads to a different reading of what's proposed, depending <coughs> on how you do that, that it looks like a, you know, a full-blown second floor, the way that it's rendered mm -hmm. in the plans that we have. So we're, we're in agreement that there's no, at this point, there's, there's no potential with a six-foot bearing. There's no potential for that to be an accessory yeah, dwelling, dwelling space. unit yep. in the future. So we are now left with simply um, considering the variance mm -hmm. for the overall height, still based on 21 foot, 10 and 3 quarter inches, you know, I would 22 feet. Right. Right. That, that simplifies things. I, mean, yeah. Yeah. I would agree. Sorry. All right. Did you have anything you wanted to add? And I'll yeah. close. Yeah, I'll just say that it may be <coughs> somehow there was some. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Wesley McKeever. Okay. Thank uh, some, you. you know, there must be, uh, you know, something got said over incorrectly or something like that. And I think that's maybe what you were addressing before the meeting as far as that sort yeah. of route. Yeah. Yeah. all this is a little unfamiliar for me, but, uh, um, you know, definitely pass along that, you know, getting the correct sort of, uh, uh, you know, layout is a, makes things a bit easier on everybody, that sort of thing. So. All right, I appreciate that. All right, I'm going to close the public hearing, uh, bring it back to the table. Um, does anybody have anything else they want to add? Questions, comments? I don't uh, does anybody want to make a motion before we go through our list of criteria? That is a motion to vote or not? Um, well, as for whether to accept the variance of four feet. Oh, that that motion. <laughs> that that one. <laughs> that motion. Yeah. Um, well, I move to uh, to put to a vote. Is that what I'm doing here? So yeah, actually, it's odd. I think you move yeah. to approve the variance, then it goes through all the hoopla, then you come back around and you vote on the motion after you've gone through the hoopla. I, I wonder if, in this case, should we be talking, I'm interrupting your motion. Not at all. I'm sorry, <laughs> but um, should we be, if we're making a motion such as this, and Chris, if you'd like to make it, that's fine, or if you'd like me to make it, but. A move to approve this variance, provided that the updated plans are attached to this proposal that uh, uh, that show the corrected heights and dimensions. Uh, that's a material piece of this that I would not want to untangle later. Yeah, that's I would agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we can make a motion and attach any conditions. So if you want to make a motion then with the conditions, please right. yeah, 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 a motion to uh, to approve this request uh, with the revised uh, dimensions that we've discussed in this meeting uh, attached as a as an exhibit to the proposal. Okay. Do I have a second? I'll second it. All right. So now we'll go through our list of criteria. Indeed. All right. Uh, this is a um, we have to go through a list of criteria that we have to, for whatever legal reason, we have to do what we do, and it's not going to make a dead sense. So, um, number one, whether the property in question will yield a reasonable return or whether there can be any beneficial use of the property without the variance. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Two, whether the variance is substantial. Yes. <clears throat> no. No. What, what, is your, what, what is your answer? I said yes. Oh, okay. My answer is no. I'm going to say no. So no. Um, whether the essential character of the neighborhood would be substantially altered, whether the adjoining property would suffer any substantial detriment as a result of the variance. I say no. 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 Um, number four, whether the variance would adversely affect the delivery of governmental services such as water distribution, sanitary, blah, blah, blah. Hmm. No. 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 Okay. Number five, whether the property owner purchased the property with the knowledge of the zoning restriction. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Whether the property owner's predicament feasibly can be alleviated through some method other than a variance? No. No. 
Um, I'm going to take predicament being the needed height, and I'll say no. I say yes. Um, seven, whether the existing conditions from which a variance is being sought were self-created. Yes. 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 Whether the spirit and intent behind the zoning requirement would be observed and substantial justice done by granting the variance. Yes. 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 I was thinking about that question. I don't want to make our meeting longer, but uh, that's a pretty open statement that we yeah. really, uh, respond to spirit and intent. Um, and I guess from the conversation here tonight, I could say yes to that. All right. Judy, you want to call the roll, please? Ted, was that a yes for you as well? Yes. Okay. Yes. So we are calling roll on. The board shall determine after weighing the factors above and any other factors the board, de board deems relevant. Whether the property owner has shown practical dif difficulty so inequitable as to justify granting a variance to the property owner. Is that in fact the case? Or is that, or is that the question, are those the questions you've just answered? Those are the questions we just answered. Okay, so you're, I'm sorry, then calling so, the uh, vote uh, on the motion that's on the table. Yes. Okay. To approve the variance with, let me just make sure we've got it correctly, pending that, pending that final drawings, you want final drawings, yeah, are attached yeah. as an exhibit. With the revised, revised dimensions. dimensions. As All discussed. Drawings with revised dimensions attached. Well, wouldn't it be that they're consistent with the packet? No, because no. the, I don't know what you must recall this, right? The, the form that you, you drafted, right? Because it's in the form, right? It's all the, those dimensions the are in, is in there. The issue is that the so. interior dimensions change, not the overall height. Yeah, the height, the height yeah. didn't change. So it wouldn't be a matter of being consistent with that, with what you drafted here? Because Well, the, what Dan brought up is, is pretty valid. Um, if the bearing wall on the second floor is, is going to be built at six feet. The plans that we have show that interior bearing wall on the second floor at eight feet. Oh, I understand. Right. Which makes that a habitable, potential right. habitable unit. So right. they've taken that off of the table. Right. Which would possibly impact us in our discussion. So no, I understand that. Right. Asking for the revised drawings to be part of the application for the zoning permit. Well, yeah, but what I'm bringing up is what are the revised drawings? I think the revised drawings would be drawings that are consistent with what is in the, um, I don't know what to call this, this form that you draft. Because that's it's in here. I mean, I read this. I didn't pay attention to drawings. I read this and what we've talked about here yeah, I mean, that's is consistent the, with what's in this form. True. I mean, the variance doesn't change. It's, it looks like a 22 feet mm -hmm. high and, I'm a, and it's a four foot right. variance from the code. Well, well, I'm not here to muddy the water. I'm yeah, just yeah, saying I if it's a matter of what the condition is, I'm just offering that maybe that bring more clarity to what the condition is, that it be consistent. When you say revised, what? how revised? What What revised? Well, it's well, yeah. revised consistent okay. with this, right? Then we can, yeah, we can clarify that. Okay, we can clarify that. We've discussed tonight what the builder is going to build, which is, in is a discrepancy to what was applied for. Right. So the builder has agreed to provide the drawings for the record and the application, and we have made that a condition okay. based on discussion. Okay. So that's why Dan says we want the revised drawings as part okay. of the record. So the record, consistent with the record. Yes. Okay, I understand. But we'd, a, we'd essentially be going for a second variance to accommodate the drawings as drawn, which would be right. for allowable square footage, because that second floor would double your square footage, yes. essentially. No, I'm good with it. Okay. 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 Yes. Cool. Yeah. Judy? Yes. Is there a name for those drawings that you use in the final version? Is there a name for that, or are you just going to say, Builder will supply drawings for the record because what if they change some more? I don't. I, I mean, I, is there just a name for the drawings that you end up using? Uh, the, no, do you have a building permit? No, I do not. Yet. We have, not have to get. They have to get the permit yeah. for me first. Mm -hmm. so. Well, I could have submitted them, but they would have to wait. Yeah. Yellow Springs of approval before they would be final approval. 
So we can call these the final plans. Final okay. Correct, yes. Okay. Got it. Okay. So I, I got that and we're we're calling that roll now. Ryas. Uh, yes. Pfeiffer. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 That was hang on for <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, we have no agenda planning, but um, if you all want to have a little bit of a discussion about this 18 foot thing, um, I find it to be really. You guys, I, yeah, I don't think you have to be here for this. So. <laughs> <laughs> and they're out. Yeah, nice to meet you, okay? Chris, good night. Nice to meet you. Appreciate it. I will talk to maybe. Uh, we're out of the office. Our office is closed tomorrow from 8 to 12 30. So after 12 30. Yes, I want to buy your spot. We'll do. Thanks, Judy. Nice to meet you. Try to write a good night. Nice to meet you. Bye. So, so anyway, you know, to me, we've worked really hard to try to get these inconsistencies through the zoning code corrected. And I think that if we're permitting a 24 foot tall dwelling, an accessory dwelling unit in all of the districts, and the accessory dwelling unit setbacks, everything complies to the same thing that it does as an accessory unit. The only difference between those two is the height. One is 18 foot maximum and one is 24 foot maximum. I don't understand why that is the case, but that's why we had a hearing tonight that I thought, right. quite frankly, was just a complete waste of my time. So <laughs> what what is this? I mean, there, is there any history about why there is a difference? The only thing that I, go back to how the, the zoning code as, um, it was like a boilerplate zoning code. And, and the technical review committee went to great length to try to go through every one of those sections. But, you know, after about a thousand oh, reviews okay. of this, there's just stuff that got, that slipped through the cracks that you couldn't think about because you were trying to cover 20 in a Okay, all right, all right. You know, one of those things. And to me, this is one, one of those things. You know, probably during the discussion, 18 foot made sense for an accessory unit back there. You know, it's a single story, it might be a story and a half, you know, and that's about it. That's all that's in the backyard. Well then, so we agreed to 18 feet. So then conversation goes on and the accessory dwelling units comes up. Okay. So then we start talking about accessory dwelling units and if to get habitable height, um, all of those code restrictions, you know, all of a sudden now you've exceeded 18 foot, mm -hmm. just like okay. that. Okay. So 24 foot became the max. Okay. But it wasn't, nobody thought to go back, jump back and say, well, what about okay. the inconsistency of those? I understand. And that's what I see this as. All I right. may be wrong, but, you know, that's what makes sense to me. Okay. I understand. Yeah. So it wasn't as if there's like some affirmative action where, you know, people said, we really want this to be different. You know, we no, want this to be 18 not, feet. You know, know, we're right. not here to bet that part all we're doing is making you know we can make a, a recommendation to denise to take this before planning commission for discussion which then goes through public hearings and then it goes through council for another layer of public hearings and then all the planning stuff and all of the um political stuff right, all gets right. vetted publicly you right, know that's right. not up to us. right it's a recommendation, is just, is a recommendation. Yeah, this is to me this is a big question right. mark why are we here tonight well, over this, and, and it seems like there's a glitch. And there, I can't think of any reason why there would be a difference between you know, that is a, a non-inhabitable accessory. The, the only the thing, end. though, is when someone comes to, and I'm sensitive to the fact that, you know, I don't want to waste your time here, but, um, you know, the accessory dwelling unit that come before the planning commission, the things that they're looking at are the fact they have to have that area for the kitchenette they have to have a bathroom they have to have a toilet shower um available parking i mean they're looking at that as part of the determination i'm not sure i'm not sure how they would what does that have to do with right, well, right, I mean, right well i mean if you do the height at 24 and you're saying to that 
that what I'm giving them is can be used for the, the future accessory dwelling unit. Am I saying that only in terms of a, a, future, a future conditional use hearing? Um, you see what I'm saying? That they'd have to come. I think I understand what you're saying. But it's a permitted use. Well, I mean, it, yeah, it, it, so it's a permitted use as an accessory dwelling unit at 24 foot high with all of the other things that make it a dwelling unit. It's a conditional use. It's a permitted use. Right, it's with permitted conditions. with conditions, right. Okay, but, but you got to keep in mind that it permitted. Yeah, I did that. All right, so the conditional part, if there's a max of 24 feet, has no bearing whatsoever on the Planning Commission's view of that condition. They're not going to say lower the roof. So, no. so if I, okay, so let me attempt to understand this, right? So let me just, let me attempt to go from the abstract to the concrete, right? So let's just use this as an example, right, we have here. What if, what if there wasn't, what if the 18 feet was not the maximum, right? It was 24, let's say that was in the code, that for this, for this accessory structure, right, it was 24 feet, okay? Mm -hmm. And they weren't going to use it, it's not going to be, I mean, he, he's represented that they're not going to, there's, it's not going to be hap, you know, habitable, right? And so it's going to be for storage. Mm -hmm. So they do that, right? But then at some point, and he said that maybe at some point they'd like to have it you know, where it's habitable, right? What at that point would they have to do, if anything? Go to Planning Commission for conditional use. Okay, so it's not as if they could just go and, and they could begin installing you know, a, a, you know, a um, you know, a bathroom in there with a toilet and, and, and a shower and all. I mean, they would actually go, I mean, before they could do all that, or at least they should, they should go back before the Planning Commission, right? Yeah. Who will then consider what you would, you were raising these different considerations yeah. that is, you know, whether the parking, there's parking and, and other, I mean, there were other considerations, right? Right. Okay, so. Well, uh, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm good with the recommendation. I mean, there's, yeah, considering yeah. you have to go back before the Planning Commission, for yeah. me, that's very material, and I'm, I'm definitely good with the recommendation. But with this particular case, though, a secondary thing, Ted, I agree with you about the height is a, a hurdle that's just set to come up again and again, but the, uh, the, the square footage con control on the accessory units is going to come into play as soon as you uh, re relax the height restraint. But this building, uh, has a bigger than you, it's a three car garage and they're talking about a second floor on that and that puts it above the square footage permitted for an accessory. If you have a two story, you know, it's going to be pushing 1,400, 1,500 square feet for an accessory unit. Uh, the way square footage is described in the code at present, which is not permitted regardless. So I, th there's something to re-examine for planning if they wish to have this sort of thing be convertible to be an accessory dwelling unit. It's just we're not set up to make it happen right now without multiple variances, and we're not supposed to be doing multiple variances. So I mean, that, that's, it's a bigger question to ask. I think it's legitimate to ask planning and ask council, you know, if indeed you'd like to have more of these things working in people's backyards, what do we need to do to make it work reasonably without it getting out of control, you know, without the accessory units getting bigger than the houses, I guess is the thing everybody worries about with it, you know, with it filling every... Uh, nook and cranny of the village, but there's probably there's probably some give both in terms of square footage and height if we want more of these. If, if they were, in, as I understand, if they were enact this. If you're recommending this, they were enact this. Then all you're doing at that point is you're avoiding what we're doing here, what we did tonight, right? That's all. That's 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 all that is. I say avoiding that. That's all that's removed from from this, right? I mean, again, everything else remains the, as I understand. Everything else remains the same, right? You know. As to the use and having to get you know permits and you know, whatever it may be for that use. Well, you know another way of looking at this, right? Yeah. You yeah. know, in terms of the height of 18 feet. You know, if you have a 24 foot wide accessory unit with a 12 12 inch, okay, that's 12 foot tall in the middle, 12 foot 12 foot plus eight or nine feet is already exceeding that 18 foot. So even, you know, in, in residence A, there are, you know, 12, 12 pitches. Yeah. So, you know, it, so to me, it, it's just an oversight. You know, 18 feet doesn't work in every, even in applications of a single story accessory unit, 24 foot wide is, if, if it's 30, it's yeah. way over, well over that. 
This isn't part of the, the intent here with the code, as I understand, was to make more housing available, more affordable housing, right? To, yeah. to make more housing. I mean, that's so, I, I would think we'd want to encourage people to, I mean, I know this, you know, in relationship to this application, again, it wasn't to be, this is not to be habitable, but I mean, if we're talking about it being habitable or not, yeah, don't we want to encourage that's that? That's a valid point. I mean, because, I mean, I get the 18 feet as if you're just doing a sing, the single story garage, but if you're, you know, going to have a second floor of anything, why not do the 24 feet for that future? Why oh, exactly? Yeah. Right. right. That's, yeah. yeah, I mean, it just seems to me it's unnecessarily restrictive given the intent of what we've been trying to accomplish with the new code. Right. Hey, just a question about that. Was there any a notion to sort of separate the you know the sheep from the goats on that one and say if you are if your intention is to provide some further form of housing we're going to relax that height requirement a little bit but if in fact you you want to store more junk we don't want to relax that height requirement because it could be a one story the, the only reason that comes up for me is a particular barn on Xenia Avenue which is used to store billions and billions of bicycles and it, it perhaps is not the most attractive uh, a structure in the area. I mean, I, I don't know whether there was an eye to that when that difference was made, or if it was simply arbitrary, or if... I don't it, know how that got through. I don't know. To be honest with you. I, I, I'm baffled by it myself, but do you know what I'm saying? I'm just wondering if there was some notion that maybe we can prevent this sort of what some might consider an eyesore and over here, something that looks more like something of a small dwelling and is more appealing. I, I, I don't know. What, what was the 18 feet to, to allow for like a pole barn structure? I mean, no, I, I think it was just part of an old boilerplate zoning code. And, and the number was in there, you know. And Somehow qualified, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, and, and that's pretty consistent. You know, if it were another community, which is, you know, we, for those of us who work in other communities, this wouldn't even be on it. Right, right, right? I mean, but here, it's contrary to that logic and, and intent of the community. So, you know, like I said, we're not gonna, we're not gonna discuss the politics of it. You know, to me, I think that it's worthy of making a recommendation to Denise to take it before Planning Commission and have a discussion. I mean, that's, that's all I'm saying. I agree. Well, this is what we've, we've discussed here. Yeah. Dan, would you agree with that? Yeah, I think it's, it deserves some discussion whether well planning eventually goes to council as well. Right. So yeah. Yeah. And it, it seems like it's it's an active issue in the community. So you know, deal, address it rather than kind of keep bumping into it as right. as it not matching up with the rules as we have them written. No, I agree with that. <clears throat> I mean, right. as the code is, it's now right now though. I mean, it talks about that height in relationship to a, the the type of roof that's used so uh, not to exceed 18 feet when a hip or gable roof is used 15 feet when a mansard or gamble roof is used and 12 feet when a flat or shed roof is used yeah if you have a 12 12 pitch hip roof with a nine foot bearing wall you've exceeded that 18 feet that's a single story 12 12 pitch and I can't tell you how many houses I designed in Glenside that had 12, 12 pictures, almost all of them. So, you know, my garage, my old garage when I lived on Stewart, exceeded that 18 feet hmm. as a garage. So, so it's non, you know, it just sets up this nonconformity all through residence A. So what, I mean, what is your suggestion then? To, just to make 24 foot maximum and not seat. have any other right. right restrictions yeah well there, there's that makes sense. you know that secondary question though ted i don't know if it's on your radar for this or not but the, the square footage as it follows right now there, there are two sort of things driving it's percentage of square footage of the main building and then a maximum uh, the, the maximum is going to be too low for people to make use of if they take you up on what we're uh, you know, talking about uh, getting discussed or offered, or this this building that was in front of us today, 
We've got it. Was it 800 now uh, for the, the it's maximum? Eight, it's 800 square feet, or but okay. it's that's the maximum. It, right. But, a 20, it, but it's 66 yeah. percent of the primary dwelling. Right. Okay. Okay. 60 per 6 percent or 800. I mean, that the percentage makes sense still, but we might ask council if they're visiting this to consider 1,200, for instance. As, would that make sense as a as I an accessory was a maximum structure maximum? Each. 800 is is floating now. I guess it was. Yeah, I'd have to study that. I, to be honest, I didn't relate. I, I, I'm not trying to get this, you know, to turn it into the wild west of accessories. They've structure. already so changed those two go together in some it used way. Used to be 50 50 percent or 750 square feet. Now. Yeah, I, I pulled an earlier version when I yeah. was looking, and it was I noticed it was out of date. It was yeah, 50 and 750. So it's grown a little bit. Mm -hmm. They probably have to grow a little bit larger. I mean, people are building bigger garages than they used to. The, the, the premise on the table now is a, a small two-car garage. They're kind of Two and a half car garages pushing three car that people are talking about putting a second floor on. And if you're going to be able to do that, you need more square footage. Yeah. Which is Probably. why that one gentleman had to come and get that variance of 136 square feet. That's yeah. what you did last time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't think that's, you know, to me it's irrelevant though to the. Okay, so it would just be one variance that comes yeah. up sometimes. Then. Yeah. All right, okay. so you're going to. Talk to uh, at some on. point, I definitely will. I don't know when. I mean, I, I don't know if it's going to be, it's not going to be this next meeting, but. Um, oh, I, I mean, yeah, there's no hurry. So. I just, you know, I think that we it's incumbent upon all us this as, again a, in the as fall. a board to just not take everything that comes to us, but question it. And, you know, to me, this is just, that makes sense. So with that, um, I don't think there's anything else. I did, did have a question about the vacated alley issue when we were talking about the setback, right, in relationship to the vacated alley. So I do understand that you can divide that, right? I mean, I did. I got that out of the, the conversation, right? Yeah. And so we can divide it, but also could, I guess, could you work something out with the property owners behind you that you would take all that vacated yeah. alley? I mean, yeah. Exactly. Because, because some of the yeah. one. Some other residents have, did have that. done that. They've done like foot plain deeds. Is that right? Okay. I mean, even I mean, what typically you'll do it off the center line, and uh -huh. each property owner shares it to the center line of the vacated alley. In this particular case, this property <coughs> owner took it all the way up to this property line, and so did this one. So who has title to it? The village has title to that alley. No, who is the the Eats it's, it's an act. Well, no, it is deeded. It was deeded to the village as an alley. Yeah, yeah, so the public, so the public right it's, way. If it's so, vacated, yeah. then it's it's all it's seven and a half. If say that's fifteen feet, seven and a half is right. now one property owner and seven and a half is the other. Sometimes, and I don't know why they didn't put those lines together. I just did uh, alley uh, vacation, um, uh, and they, I'm pretty sure I went down there and I filed it. And so I'm sure that when that shows up, that's going to show them each taking that that line. It's who are they taking it from? Just so I, so I understand the, that. The, yeah, the, the village. The so village. they are, okay, so the talk about quick claim, the village is quick claiming it to, yeah. you know, if they split it, half to, right, yeah. half to one property and half to the other. So that, then it brings me to my question about the setback. So at this point, because I was reading, when I was reading the packet, and you, you had in there an excerpt from the code. My understanding is the setbacks from the property. I mean, the, the, word, the, the words are line. property line. Yeah. yeah. So, right now, as I understand, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about this property. That's a, that was an issue tonight. So the property line's not. Does it's it's not the alley. Doesn't include any of the alley, as we understand it, right? Right. The property line is the edge of the alley, if you will. According right? to this. According yeah. to this. So, yes. the, but for the, the property line. They would have to go and split that or do whatever they're going to do with that alley, right? To move that property line, is that right? Yeah. To they, have set to that that and they have to file for the record a, a deed amendment. Okay. So it's got to have a survey. Okay. And the survey shows that each okay. uh, property line is extending seven and a half feet. Okay. And then they record it. Okay. What happens if the power line's over down that alley? There's still a utility easement if there's. So there's still an easement. So they, they can't build a fence or anything in front of it because they can't get to the power lines, right? Well, it depends. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean depends? Well, if, if 
there, if the access, if the utility easement is running down there, it's no different than any other property line that abuts with the utility easement, which is almost consistent everywhere. This is true because there's gas mains and so quite a few things in those those alleys. Mm -hmm. And I just wonder if somebody takes them over, how does the gas company get to them? The, the property owner has to, to maintain that access easement. In oh, the, I see. Right. So right. Right. if they have to dig it up, if they have to dig it up, it's on the homeowner. Right. Right. It's on the homeowner. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, these, That's the bad part. Because these, they can't, they can't access these anyway. Yeah, these I mean, they would good. have to go through the property. They'd have to go yeah. into the property anyway. But at so the on. moment, the, the, we have those power lines and everything. They, they, there's nothing you can do about that. I mean, if there's, there, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. if people take over the alley, for instance, and you've got power line problems, and now they go through there and cut the trees. They have, they have right to do that. Yeah. To the eye of that. So somebody can't build something out there. Not within the well. That's where you get set back. Ah. Okay. Oh, okay. Right. Right. It, it sounds like it's quite possible that they've already informally done that. From what we were hearing today. Yeah. That's what that, I got to be able to come up with that setback, they've probably already staked out the line in the middle of the alley. Well, but that, that, that you answered. That was where I was going with that. Was because we're talking about. Well, it's been vacated. I was like, well, okay, then by operation of that vacation, then is the, the, the property line not what we have on in here or on this, in this packet, but is the property line rather the middle of that, that alley? But you've answered that for me. So no, I mean, it's, it's not it, at this point. It, it's you've got not. To go. I mean, I don't know why. I mean, it's, I'd have to go look because I've noticed some other ones like that in places where they have moved the line and said it was vacated and I can find record of it. But then there's other ones that, they're saying are vacated where they didn't move the line and why I don't know I don't know if that was just something that wasn't filed by the village way back mm -hmm. when or maybe that was something that they didn't used to do okay. you know right they just recorded it but didn't change it okay I, um, I really don't know yeah well, anything else then no thank you motion to adjourn thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll second, second. Okay. Okay. all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. thanks everyone thank you yeah. Yeah.